so this time i thought of choosing different strategy to present so although i will be telling about what is arbitration research but uh, i will be also explaining the practical significance means how to approach arbitration law practically but as a construction arbitration so uh, at first the question is why we go for arbitration so obviously it's commercial all those contractual cases which are commercial in nature and uh, lots of money are involved so to resolve a dispute we don't go usually for the court so we put the clause in the contract where uh, at first we will go for the drp that i will explain later so arbitration clause is mentioned in the contract it's a commercial in nature and also one of the reason to go for arbitration is it needs some meticulous or technical eyes to go through it and the basic two categories in which we can bifurcate arbitration is ad hoc arbitration and institutional arbitration so what is ad hoc and what is institutional arbitration so ad hoc means when the parties is usually ad hoc attracts the arbitration in constellation act 1996 of india so when the party appoint arbitrator which usually are retired judges or the technical uh, engineers as such so when they nominate so it is called as ad hoc in sense institutional arbitration per se is like uh, we go for cia in singapore international arbitration center or say mumbai center of international arbitration so this is so they have their own rules as such own procedure and they will be doing the administrative things all these things so these are the institutional arbitration so types of arbitration if i say so majorly in india construction arbitration 70% of the cases comes from construction arbitration this is not my view retired judges like uh, uh, ak sikri and many more even the sitting judge like uh, pratibha singh is their statement also that most of the cases which they handle is construction arbitration then there is maritime arbitration also sports arbitration is coming is also coming in the picture and e-commerce arbitration you might be aware of the future amazon dispute so uh, now before indulging more into this what is drb what is conciliation i would like to show you that how you can approach a search means if you just search model epc agreement nhai which is uh, a model agency under mot which is ministry of road transport highway so you will get the document like this okay which which will contain the uh, contractual provision means how the contracts happen between the parties and before that there is one more which we say uh, request for proposal okay like uh, i'm starting from the initial point means how the construction project start how it begin so and i will be linking indian contract act in between like uh, you all have i guess exposure of indian contract act so when we say that uh, a bit a big document is invited or a tender document has been come up so what it is uh, a proposal a request for proposal a request to offer so based upon that it's a kind of a request to offer it's offer for offer to invitation kind of by invitation to offer any word you can use any phrase you can use invitation to offer so i'm using this document to explain the further things it's, it's given in the uh, public platform it is available so it is an and also before again indulging that what is epc mode and all those things there are ver uh, various kinds of per se a mode or the model on which the construction project begin like one which i am doing uh, dealing with here is engineering procurement construction there is item rate there is hybrid annuity model there is building operate transfer model so there are plenty of things so i will be taking this example that how the initiation begin as such for the construction work so usually the mort or say nhi will upload this document in the e procurement website so you
Okay. So these are the contents which will be uh, you can go through it briefly as such that uh, how the bidding process start is what are the terms of bidding, what is what are the criteria and qualification which are required for from the bidder side. And mind you, because when I was studying there in the initial in the first year, I used to get conf uh, confused between promiser and promisee. Means who is a promiser, who is a promisee as such. So in all such construction contracts. Since it's a reciprocal, means it depends upon the reciprocal promises. So depending upon how the work has been approaching, so promiser can also become promisee, promisee can also become promiser. So I will explain it further. So let's start from here. So uh, preparation, submission of bid, bid security is it's kind of earnest money. So this is the mainly the notice inviting tender or notice inviting bid, you can say. This is the format as such. So, yeah, see this thing which I have said earlier, this RFP, request for proposal, is not an agreement and is neither an offer nor invitation by the authority to the prospective bidders or any other person. So it's an invitation to offer usually. Then the offer will be put by the bidder or the prospective contractor. Then it will be getting, it, it will get accepted. Then letter of acceptance will be given. So then that will bind us, bind the parties and uh, will make a uh, legible or you can say legally contract, legally agreement or legal agreement, a contract person. So again, this part is also important that the authority, its employees and advisors make no representation or warranty and shall have no liability to any person, including any applicant or bidder. It's a kind of uh, means they are, uh, means, uh, making themselves kind of indemnified that we don't have as such if any fault or anything wrong is given we will not be incurring any such uh, damage this, we will not be attracting any such regulation for thought of principle of restitution as such. so this is applicable for the authority means the nhai who is publishing this or its employees so this is uh, in epc contract usually the designing the engineering part procurement and construction, these are the obligation for the contractor. This is just a draft that this will be the construction period as such if the project length is this much and this much, two lane, four lane, six lane, this is just a draft. This, I'm, I'm putting this thing to get you means acquainted with how I'm going to deal with further, with things for, further. So the bidding usually happens uh, in a single stage, two part system or single stage, one part system. It depends upon the, the quantification of the project, the value of the project. So usually the two parts, when it says two part system, so it is usually technical bid and the financial bid. And uh, the financial bid on the second part, that will be only open whose technical bids are responsive to eligibility and qualifications. It means that Technical bid means you have the previous experience as such to deal with such magnitude of construction which this RFP is giving to you or providing it to you. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. So this is also the important point that bids will be evaluated for the project on the basis of the lowest call, cost required by a bidder for implementing the project. So uh, we call in the technical sense L1. And uh, this is the EPC contract. What happens that usually in the BOT model, uh, build, operate, transfer model, and there are also two parts, BOT, annuity, BOT, toll. So in BOT, annuity model, if I can give the example, like how different it is from the EPC model. In BOT, to, uh, annuity, the one, who bid or who present the minimum annuity payment, he or that, that, that contractor, that bidder will become the as will become as L1 or lowest bidder. Same goes for the toll. Means who will be giving maximum toll? Uh, I, I know that you guys don't have means as such uh, what is BOT toll and BOT uh, this uh, annuity as such, but I'm just giving you the preface that how it is different from how this EPC model is different from another kind of models. 
so see, this is how it works usually that invitation of rfp the notice inviting tender gets will open in the last eight and uh, you can see here that uh, and before that also there will be pre bid meeting means if any bidder has any issue or any confusion regarding any terms or uh, in the this request for proposal document so there will be pre bid query we say that that will be taken care of and uh, i think uh, they will ask the question the authority which is uh, the modal, modal agency here is nhi so they will be answering it and uh, mind you this request for proposal document and the pre bid queries these are very important in terms of that when arbitration when the process, the matter goes to arbitration this all documents become kind of part of the exhibits sometimes it depends upon the parties it becomes a part of the part of the exhibits the party can say see this obligation has been written in the contract document also and has been referred in the bid document also so all these technicalities how this thing goes are very important in construction arbitration so these are generally uh, instruction to bidders and all those things uh, but it's not that important as such means you can go through it it's available in the public forum uh, and uh, only the important point which i have highlighted that i will only dealing with means that is what i was talking before the technical capacity for demonstrating technical capacity and experience the bidder said over the past five financial years preceding the bid due date have received payments for construction of eligible project it it says that the bidder the who is bidding he has previously done with such magnitude of the work so that has that will be seen and that will be counted as a technical capacity of the bidder so the table also shows uh, that if the estimated project cost is less than 100 so the person the bidder has dealt with at least one time so this are all are here and since it's a draft document as such so means it's a model agreement so it has covered everything not only the road the means also the bridges it's a part of the road also the bridges this is uh, uh, road over bridges flyovers all those things tunnel project so all these are covered so the uh, so this is what i was talking about the second stage which is the financial capacity the bidders will have a minimum net worth it is required as such whether suppose if i am making company i should have the finance financial backup that i will complete the project that is the main motive that is the main public policy motive commercial motive also that one should finish the project in so this is what i was talking before that the pre bid conference will happen and where many queries of the bidder will be solved in this pre bid conference so after this the request for proposal is done usually what happen then the contract okay uh, the main contract that will be signed by the parties depending upon if if one has been selected as say l1 which is lowest bidder and then letter of acceptance has been given from nhi or from any nodal agency who is dealing with that project so the contract will be signed <coughs> and all, although there are in this only the general condition of contract is given but there is special condition of contract are also mentioned in the it depends means the what is the magnitude of the project this is this gcc or you say general condition of contract this is applicable for every kind of road because i am dealing here with road road only but for the special condition of contract a uh, specific specific provisions or specific terms will be provided in that scc as such okay so this is very important if you want to pursue the, your career in this construction arbitration you have to have this thing in mind that in which particular clause what thing is mentioned it will be easy for you if you uh, is kind of remember or means obviously when you go through this documents every time uh, deal with this documents see for a year or two you will get through it so this is how the clauses are mentioned first definitions is given 
scope of project, obligations of authority, performance security. I will explain it to you before right of way. Change of scope. So this is the main concern here, dispute resolution clause. So before explaining this, uh, let me give you a brief preface about the above provisions as such. See, uh, thing is, uh, this contract agreement, or say when the party gives the performance security, I will explain the performance security in brief. So this will be done in the stamp paper of that particular state in which the project is, or in which the uh, the employer the employer uh, is situated means NHI is situated. It depends upon means many conditions as such. When the when the project is located, that also and it depends upon the between the parties. They can uh, means concur between them that where which state which stamp act of which state will be applicable as such. So this is how the contract means between the parties happen. So, and uh, this is see in the name of president of India usually happens, or the, in the name of governor it usually happens because it's the uh, central government project. And I think uh, Article 299, I'm not able to be, I guess Article 299 only of Constitution of India deals with this thing only. See. Uh, after evaluation of the bids received, the authority accepted the bid of the selected bidder and issued its letter of acceptance to the selected bidder at the contract price specified. And then, like in the same the contract act, you have to miss it's a kind of miss the bidder is giving the proposal because the this bid thing was invitation to offer. So now the bidder will give the offer. So when it is accepted, the letter of acceptance uh, will be given. So the bidder also has to give the consent to this letter of acceptance. Then the proper contract will be signed or the contract will be uh, legally viable. So in this, usually in all the all kind of models, the article one will be definitions and interpretations. So it's a basic thing. I'm not going to deal with this, all those things. I'm coming to the main point. This is important for you guys, IP, here. Okay, uh, right of way, it's important because the main concern of this uh, project of bid is giving right of way. So you have to understand what is the meaning of right of way as such. So it means and refers to the total land required and acquired for the project, both in its width and length, together with all way leaves this means unrestricted, unrestricted access and other rights of way, however described, necessary for construction and maintenance of the project highway. So it basically talks about the land, the stretch of land on which the road will be constructed. So scope of project and Mind you, this all these documents are very uh, heavy loaded in terms of pages. So uh, there will be schedules also, means which will define, and there will be drawings also, means how we are gonna make the uh, road as such. So these are all are given in schedules, like in schedule A. So under this agreement, the scope of projects are mean and include construction of the project highway on the site set set forth in schedule A and is specified in schedule B together. With provision of project facilities as specified in Schedule C. So, just by not uh, going through this provision, you have to side by side look into what is mentioned in this all schedules. These are very important. So, what happens is that uh, in the there is one schedule also in which uh, it will be mentioned that within when the project will, uh, will get initiated, this much of land you will be giving to us. Then in 180 days, this much of land or this much of stretch of land, that will be provided by the authority to the contractor. 
so this all this all are mentioned in the schedule so as such it is given that no less than 90% of the right of way of the construction zone of total length of the project highway within a period of 30 days from the date of this agreement this this can has to be given by the authority to the contractor as such and also uh, the approval for of the general arrangement drawing so then what happened that uh, the basic drawing this thing will be given by the also this deals with the railway thing but usually what happens in the construction contract and uh, the, uh, the authority will provide you with the drawing or with a uh, work program and based upon that the contractor will give their means their work program as such in various method like we say cpm part what is cpm part it's a critical part method program evolution review, uh, review technique is part so based on that also work program is given and the contractor will also providing you with the drawing and this all environmental clearance as required under this so you guys have gone through the environmental law so everything uh, right from the water air air everything uh, this should be taken care of by the authority and it depends upon the provision as such whose responsibility it is or whose obligation it is to get the environmental clearance sometimes uh, i have seen a case uh, before before uh, hearing you this let me explain you what is performance security so uh, performance security does is that that when as a contractor i have brought the plants machineries or or the labor to the project area with the with the, uh, with the construction will begin so in lieu of that the authority will provide i will be giving you the means as a contractor i will be providing you as a mobilization uh, guarantee and in lieu of that the contract uh, the authority will pay to me pay to the contractor that yes this guy or this contractor is ready to work he has all the capacity as such he has brought the plants machineries so so there are two conditions the contractor will be providing you with mobilization guarantee in terms of this bank guarantee and based upon that some percentage of amount will be given to the contractor by the authority so it will then after 30 days or say after you attain a particular milestone of performance security as such or advanced performance performance security that will be given by the contractor to the authority as such and then again this will go on that the authority will after you complete a particular stretch a particular milestone is achieved so the authority will also pay you as such and when they pay you they will retain some money so this is called as retention money because the authority will also think nas that i have if i give all the money to to the contractor what if if the project is completed half and the contractor run away so some percentage say 5% or 3% or 10% that will be retained by the authority as such and that is called retention money and uh, regarding this environmental clearance thing what i was talking that when the project is situated in say in jammu kashmir or in that hilly areas which are more vulnerable to environment so the national green tribunal depending upon the contractor is not fulfilling is what is required as such to maintain the environment so they will they will putting a bond which is called as environmental bond as such like you have to pay a 3 crore bond to ngt to pursue to, to pursue with the uh, further contract so this is on the part of the construction contract only and uh, this is the non obstant clause which starts from not standing not standing anything to the contrary contained in this agreement the parties expressly agree that the aggregate damage is payable under contract shall not exceed 1% of the contract price and uh, section sub, if i talk about indian contract act section 74 if you go through it so it contains basically that those it contains the liquidated damages and what is liquidated damages for say ld ld is the means the, the damages which it will be payable and it has already been decided in the contract like here it is given that it will not exceed 1% of the contract price so it is already been been decided in the contract so that will attract section 74 of the indian contract 
and in case if suppose this kind of damages are not mentioned as such in the contract then section 73 that will be applicable in that in you in accordance with that section 73 the uh, damages will be paid to the respective parties as such means who whose fault it is depending upon that thing so this is the obligations of the contractor means uh, he has to undertake survey investigation design procurement all those things and there will be some obligations of the authority so yeah this is important important in terms of i will uh, let you know obligations related to relating to subcontracts and any of the other agreements so when the contractor usually subcontract with the subcontractor uh, so the contingent contract that will kick in contingent contract i guess you all are aware of if you go through the indian contract act the the main thing or the main uh, criteria which i am uh, highlighting it is this usual subcontract agreement happened on back to back basis means the contractor will tell the party tell the subcontractor that i will pay you only if i get the payment from the authority so it's a contingent activity means it depends upon when i will get the payment from the authority then i will be only in the position to pay the parties further aggregated all obligations and liabilities under this agreement for the entire project having set time limit with the contractor it's a kind of indemnification if, if you look from the another side that even if it is the fault of subcontractor the authority is not care of about this thing the it, it is the obligation the obligation will lie to the contractor that it will indemnify the authority so even if subcontractor is on the fault the contractor the contractor has to deal with it so this is what i was talking about the environmental measures the contractor agrees to conduct its activities in connection with the agreement in such a manner so as to comply with the environmental requirements which includes just as just applicable laws and clearance which are uh, as per the indian law so this agreement constitutes its legal valid and binding obligation enforceable against it in accordance with the terms hereof and its its and its obligations under this agreement will be legally valid binding and enforceable against it in accordance with the terms hereof so the if you if you open the indian contract act you see the first 10 or first 15 you can say uh, uh, sections deal with this thing only this there should be no scores and as such there should not be undue influence as such so this then only it will be legally valid and binding uh, this is important the inf information furnished in the bid request for qualification request for proposals or otherwise and uh, as updated on or before the date of this agreement is true and accurate in all respects as to as on the date of this agreement so this provision has a disclaimer clause also this contract this contradict actually this uh, this has a contradiction with the disclaimer clause where the uh, contractor will say that whatever this data i have given to you it's your obligation to to see whether this data is correct or not it's not my obligation as such you have to go through it you have to investigate you have to inspect as such then means it's a kind of disclaimer by the authority so this is the ip thing this is uh, available in the public forum you i just ticked it so that you, if you are interested in this ip thing you can go through it means how ip is important in, in this construction contracts as such like uh, the contract is not for any reason object to or interfere in any way with the ownership registration or use of ip rights by authority for any purpose whatsoever so like like this is what i was saying the disclaimer clause that the contractor acknowledges that prior to this execution so he has gone through it complete and careful examination has been done uh, the means all the what is it inspection investigation has been done by the contractor it's their liability if any faults happen
think without wasting any time further, I think I should go to the arbitration clause only. Okay. So uh, this is the Article Twenty Six, which is dispute resolution clause. So uh, what happens that if any dispute arises, as such, and usually in construction contracts, what are the disputes which arrive can be taken into three categories. Uh, one is uh, like delay, another is disruption, and another is design claim. It means uh, delay claim, disruption claim, and design claim. So when the when the contractor is somehow not able to finish the project in certain amount of period, so he will be asking for the extension of time from the authority. So the authority will say that I will be giving you the time factor as such which you are asking me, but I will not be paying you. I will not be giving you the cost factor of it. So in the meantime, what happens in the future? The cost factor becomes one of the claim by the contractor, and then again as such, like prolongation claim, he will be claiming it through the. Uh, he will be claiming it to the uh, authority. So this is uh, one of the claim. And one of the claim happen. One of the very basic claim is change in law. Like suppose if the project hasn't started before, say uh, GST, GST is uh, before GST, say which started from first July two thousand seventeen. So uh, if the project has commenced before that GST thing, implementation of GST. So before GST, pre-GST era, VAT and this uh, VAT were applicable as such. That excise duty on all those things. So after coming GST means the change in law happened. So if there is any additional amount which is to be paid by the authority to the contractor, so that will also become one of the part of the claim which will be claimed by the contractor. So uh, this is how this and uh, before invoking the arbitration clause, what usually happened that there will be some dispute resolution mechanism in which the Authorities uh, hire uh, person hire hire personnel, a technical personnel. So they will be forming a board, which we say as, as dispute resolution board. So they at first they will be looking into the matter, and if the matter failed, then it will go it will go uh, to the conciliation or mediation. So as you are aware that uh, part three of the arbitration and conciliation act deals with conciliation, and uh, Like I'm, if I take the example of NHAI, like it has a nodal uh, internal agency, uh, which is the uh, committee of independent uh, conciliation committee of independent experts. So there will be panels. So we have to choose a member from those those panels. So a conciliation committee will be formed, and the claims in brief will be given to that conciliation committee. So again, if that failed. Then the party will be going for the arbitration, and mind you, this settlement this, in terms of conciliation it is binding in nature. This, if you look, section seventy four and section thirty of Arbitration Conciliation Act, it states the same thing that like the award, the settlement agreement which happens when the party signed to the, this con uh, conciliation settlement, so that will become binding legally per se to the parties. So uh, yeah, so any dispute, this uh, difference or controversy or whatsoever or whatever nature, howsoever arising under or out of or in relation to this agreement between the parties, and so notified in writing by either party to the other party, shall in first instance be attempted to be resolved amicably in accordance with the conciliation procedure set forth in clause twenty six point two. Yeah, this is the twenty six point two clause conciliation. Although it is it is redundant as such because NHAI has brought the same thing which I was saying before, uh, the independent committee of the experts committee of conciliation thing. So they will be looking into the matter, and if it fails, so this also has that within 30 days, like if I read it from here, if such meeting does not take place within the 30 business days, period of the dispute is not amicably settled within 30 days of the meeting, or the dispute is not resolved. As evidence for the signing of the written terms of settlement within 30 days of the notice in writing, then the parties will go to the arbitration. So 
this is the arbitration clause and it's very important as such because i guess you guys while studying is not prone to this how the arbitration clause is, looks so any dispute which remains unresolved between the parties through the mechanisms available prescribed in this in the agreement irrespective of any claim value which has not been agreed upon reached settlement by all parties will be referred to the arbitral tribunal as per the arbitration and conciliation act again the same thing the arbitral tribunal shall make a reasoned award any award made in any arbitration held person to this article 26 shall be final and binding on the parties as from the date so the thing is now in this contract there is clear that arbitration clause is there but what happens in some of the contracts there will be some notice or circular wherein the arbitration clause will be included in that particular notice and circular so you have to see that section 7 of the arbitration conciliation act whether there exists an arbitration agreement between the parties or not okay and if you have gone through it and uh, there is no other such amicable settlement hap happening as such then you will be invoking arbitration in terms of section uh, 21 of the arbitration and conciliation act and in it you will be giving in brief what is your claim you will be also nominating your arbitrator or giving a three members panel to choose from it so if i give the sole arbitrator name supposedly that uh, this will be this person will be acting as a sole arbitrator or this is this person is my nominee so i have to give this credential as such also as per schedule 6 of the arbitration and conciliation act okay and then as per section 11 5 subsection 5 if the parties do not respond to it or do not nominate or do not give assent to that particular arbitrator then as per article 116 11 subsection 6 the parties has the right to go to the high court on which the uh, jurisdiction lies and get the appointment of the arbitrator from there itself okay and uh, before this is what i was explaining you that drb thing and mediation bill it is very interesting that when the mediation bill becomes a law so how the things going to happen in the near future so if you go to the section 89 of cpc it says the same thing when if i look into it it says the settlement of dispute outside the court and section 28 of ica this is important as such because in this it is given that even if the contract becomes void as such but the arbitration clause of that contract that will be legally viable and the person or the party can invoke arbitration as such so sequence wise approach has to be done to the arbitration conciliation act like i was saying before that if the arbitrator uh, if the parties fail to nominate their arbitrator or to select the arbitrator from the panels given by the claimant is the person who will be claiming for the uh, who, who is claiming so that will be one minute so that will be the uh, that particular so we are saying that if the parties didn't uh, appoint or didn't name the arbitrator within 30 days so section 116 by section 116 of the anc act one can go to the court and now that arbitrator, arbitrator has been appointed so if as a claimant i have appointed one arbitrator and as a respondent he has appointed another arbitrator so this both two arbitrators will be nominating or will be appointing a presiding arbitrator and we can say that arbitral tribunal has set up why now so and uh, i will not be approaching i will not be going sequence wise because it will take many time what i have done that i have made a ms list means how to approach i mean ms word so uh, i will be uploading it in the linkedin as such so you can go through it okay is that all right yes sir okay so uh, not only this arbitration and conciliation act 
this this laws are also important as such uh, means uh, besides the arbitration consideration as act which one has to focus on like contract law which i have already explained environmental law like i was saying about the ngt bond insolvency law and companies act so this is important as such so why what happened that suppose cirp means uh, the insolvency resolution process has kicked in so anything as such means any proceeding any arbitration that will be stopped so how to connect with this insolvency law and this uh, arbitration you have to have the uh, knowledge about the insolvency law also and we say that cpc and evidence law is not applicable for the arbitration as per section 19 but practically speaking this is just for the sake of uh, writing in the uh, anc act but practically uh, this the arbitrator only deal with the cpc and evidence act only. and this esg yeah environmental social governance so if you are dealing in the investment law which now has become uh, the criteria that the in investment law also in mergers and acquisition also the companies who is acquiring or who is investing in another company or in another country as such i'm talking about only the company as such leave leave the other country so the esg criteria of that particular company how liable how uh, uh, how good it is that esg rating as such that is uh, now coming to the picture that usually is now uh, look after by the company and esg is nothing as such it's just a part of the sustainable development goals and this is a separate branch of law which again is very huge demand if you guys again want to make your career in this esg thing uh, i say i can say that it has a future and another thing was another law which is very important is limitation act from the point of view of cause of action like uh, if i say uh, that my claim which i didn't receive from the contract from the i am the contractor i have some claim the claim has arisen in 2012 person and i didn't invoke the arbitration i invoked the arbitration in 2017 so five years has gone by so then it will become time barred as per the limitation act because the limitation act provides that within 3 years you have to invoke or you have to take any step to get your claim okay so how this is how limitation act is very very important message another is commercial court act so uh, like i was saying that when the arbitral tribunal has been set up so what usually do the claimant will give their statement of claims then the respondent will give their statement of defense in which he will be giving the paraphrase reply of statement of claims and if the respondent has its own counter claims so that will also be given and see when i am giving any soc or sod so that will contain exhibits or annexures so that exhibits or annexures whether that is uh, admissible or whether the party is denying that exhibits so that is done by another step which comes after the submission of soc and sod which is a statement of admission and denial so what happens in the preliminary meeting of the arbitral tribunal they will decide that uh, the admission and denial uh, format will be as per commercial court act or not and also in terms of jurisdiction so this this commercial court act come uh, came in 2015 so every court every uh, has to every high court has to maintain its own commercial division or commercial bench in high court or in the lower court so when any matters as such like section 34 which is for the setting aside of award or say section 37 which is the appeal part so when it goes to the court so it will go to the commercial division of the court so you have to look this when you when you say uh, deal with this uh, moot court thing first thing we look that whether the, this particular court has a jurisdiction to take this case or not same thing goes in the this commercial court act only is whether that particular court where the jurisdiction lies whether commercial division is in the lower court or in the high court depending upon that the petition will be filed there and the gst act which i have already dealt with uh, service thing like uh, pre gst what that was applicable now in post gst the gst since this, this all a works contract which i am talking about is epc model and all those things are kind of works contract 
so service act will be applicable charge will be applicable as such so gst will be applicable then and another thing is institutional arbitration rules because they have their own rules and mind you i should have told you before only that this all are taken from the un central model law if you look into the preamble of the arbitration conciliation act it is given there only that we have that all this uh, anc 1986 act has been taken by the 1985 model law of, from the un central then I, i think in 2005 amendment happened in that un central model and based upon that we indian in india there has been three amendment as such in 15 in 19 and in 2021 so after this thing uh so like yeah why making your career in this arbitration law so yeah it's one one of the booming areas of law means the scope is huge as such and if you are a civil engineer because i am a civil engineer as such and if, even if you are not but being a engineer being having a scientific mind i am very sure that we can all gel with this legal thing or te- a technical thing as such so in this arbitration arbitration thing very less technological persons are involved so it's a huge chance that you will be signing in this field and if you are in arbitration then switching to litigation becomes very easy as such because you will be filing section 34 37 in court and in some of the cases you will be also filing the repetition so you will be getting exposure in the from the litigation side also and the negative part you can say is that a documents the number of pages is heavy it's, it's loaded means it's more it will be more than 10k 10000 20000 it goes in lakhs also okay and uh, if you are coming if you want to make your career in this arbitration law you need to have the technical means what is the meaning of this technical terms the understanding of it it becomes very important as such and usually this people deal in the short form like pbg performance bank guarantee row rob so you need to means have this mind that what is the short form what is the meaning of it the short forms and monetary and other benefits yes like even though covid happened arbitration as such was not impacted in that way the, because this is uh, the private it's a private matters it between it happened between the private parties so as such there was no such influence of the code or anything so in terms of that you will not be sitting in your home and in general now like that we have come to the post covid situation so money involved is good you will be going to the hotels and all those things so it's a good thing means you will be getting too much exposure and regarding the internships and jobs when, when, when to start which uh, so it entirely depends upon you uh, as far as i can remember in fifth semester arbitration is taught in rg so if you are in first or second year and you have say uh, means think of going into the arbitration you need to study arbitration conciliation act very 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 deeply as such you have to go in very deep and you can start from the first year also it's nothing as such that you can't start from the first year but the knowledge of cpc and evidence will become important the, the laws which i have told you before some laws will become important and to how to get internships like i have shared uh, one document in my linkedin profile where the list of all the retired judges who are the arbitrator who are, who are acting now as arbitrator so all the address email id phone number that, that is also given there so if you are not getting anywhere and this this all the judges they are practicing in delhi only most of them, most of them at at delhi or in mumbai and not just this arbitration they will they are exposed to every other thing means uh, the litigation side means property law everything they are de- dealing with everything and like i am with the senior advocates so sir has all, also uh, spoke to the, all those matters as such of litigation and all those things so and there are firms uh, i can name some like elp it's a very good firm so, so they conduct their own test means you don't need to have any such connection you don't need to have anyone who is uh, there who is doing job there plus just, just give the test if you pass you will get the internship there are also some courses offered by the edtech startups that if you pursue the course and if you are in top 3 then they will be offering you the internship and your yeah, linkedin connections if you are very active in linkedin not just active in sense if you are having constructive uh, 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 constructive talk with the 
particular persons, the partners, or the senior associates, or principal associates, then chances of getting into the that particular law firm, the tier one or tier two, interning there, that become that become very uh, the probability of become the probability become very higher as such. And CV uh, like before coming to this, uh, before joining this legal, I was working as an engineer since just uh, one month back only. I switched to legal side, so I was kind of announced. So I, I was I got many I got exposed to many partners as such from the many law firms. So what they told me that CV should be not more than one page. Means I know that there will be many things that people want to write in the CV, but they will not look into that because they receive CV. Like you people of hundreds and every day, so it's not possible for them to go through it. So one page CV is is will hold good. Although I understand that IIT KGP has their own format of CV, so, but when you are applying to the uh, internship as such, so you can draft your own CV in one page. So uh, this is and books to be followed. There are many books. I've just given the example. So. This Hindu Manudra book is very important. It's a basic book, and building an engineering contract, PC Markanda. And when you uh, when you are thorough with the this domestic arbitration, and you want to make when you want to broaden up your knowledge, then you can the last four thing, last four uh, books. Then you can uh, have it to look into it. Harsan building an engineering contracts and that one, that one is very 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 good book for international arbitration. And uh, before concluding. i will be also dealing with this subject because i know that our college is ip specialized so ipr versus adr so in this booz allen case it was said first let me explain what is right in rem and what is right in person right in rem is means your right which you are exercising against entire world like ipr all in ipr are right in rem per se it's, it's the negative right Which you are enforcing against the world, so it it comes under the umbrella of right and wrong. Right in personum means you are only like the like this commercial contract, like only two parties are involved or say three parties are involved. So this it's concise in nature means this particular party is only applicable against whom I will be uh, exercising my my right. So this is called right in person. So in Booz Allen case, this has been defined regarding the IPR. Arbitrability. So there has been means, cases and cases coming up in Supreme Court. Like the last cases is Vidya Droida in Arya Swami. Also, it, it has been said in MR MJF. Also, it has been said that IPR uh, this thing like patent copyrights, all those IPR uh, laws per se are not arbitrable because it deals with right and wrong. And only those only those data or those uh, means. Uh, Legality, which arises from the right in person, only that will be arbitrable as such. But the last one year, there has been some switch or there has been some changes, like uh, this Heroes International case, which Bombay High Court has dealt, and in this Hero Electric case, that was a trademark case in Delhi High Court dealt. So there was a discussion regarding whether the and the thing was only two parties were uh, engaged in this both the cases, Heroes International also and Hero, Hero Electric also. So the court said that since it's, so the court thought from the contractual point of view that even though it is a IPR uh, based law thing is mentioned, but since only part two parties are present, you know, and so this we will be looking into from the contractual point of lens. So the court said that yeah, IP matters are arbitrable, but the thing is this Vidya Droila case, which is given by Supreme Court. So obviously that will be standing, but although it the matter is not still clear but i guess uh, you all guys since we all are exposed to ipr and if you want to have the adr also in your uh, band of knowledge so it will become so it will be very handy for you hello yes sir we can hear you sir you are audible sir So, Please continue. So yeah, it will become very handy for you if you want to deal with arbitration having the IP back of knowledge. So what I'm going to say that play with your strength. Is where your strength lies? 
who died only okay so yeah that's it any question you have you can ask me so this is samrat here can i start with the permission of the chair and uh, matthew sir yes yes please thank you uh, sir actually uh, quite insightful sir i mean uh, it actually opened up the the the, the broader uh, i mean parlance is being very clear sir but uh, aman sir do cheezon pe aap thodi iske upar aapki prakash daliye sir ek hai ki jisme aapne kaha ki arbitration basically comes in the domain of the right of personum that basically like uh, whoever are the aggrieved party no, no no i didn't say that i said yep you are means contradicting it but i said it only those laws only those rights which are coming from the rights in personum that are only arbitrable as such correct uh, those rights which are actually falling in the bucket of this right yeah, person, yeah, yeah. yeah. so in that context only i wanted to ask one thing like uh, can it be because many a times because uh, ip related things stuffs are actually right in rem because that person has got exclusive right to use that one precluding others from using that particular thing yes sir so how the delhi uh, i mean delhi high court's judgment in this hero electrical and uh, you know international strike the basic essence of that one like for example uh, how is it taken from that judicial precedent perspective now if you can explain that second important thing is that going back to the first initial part of your discussion or deliberation that you talked about aapne kaha ki bids notwithstanding clauses you talked about the claims clauses should be there incorporated within the contractual framework between the parties but sir i don't find any for feature clause in that one for feature clause suppose if if if, if anybody is actually uh, fly by the night or some certain person has actually i understand 1% of that one you are keeping it or what particular lump sum is being kept uh, as a precautionary contingency measure uh, to address that one but for feature clause jo hota hai wo kyu nahi hai sir iske andar mar if a for feature clause is there which is a very much part of that one even for force majeure clause i mean force majeure force situations force majeure situation so these are the two questions sir if i will answer the answer your second question first thank you sir. Yeah. No Post major clause are always present in every construction contract. Okay, and there has been some cases or there has been some clauses also, but where it mentions that if the contract, if the claim value exceeds say twenty percent of the contract value, then you cannot go for arbitration. You have to file the civil suit. Okay, and that is that is since and that is contractually done. and it is legally viable also regarding the second question that first question sorry that why ip thing so delhi high court or bombay high court look that since only two parties are involved so they look from the lens that this is commercial contract in nature they didn't go that this particular it was a transfer of copyright a transfer of trademark from one party to another party it was not enforced against the entire world as such Correct. In that case, they look from the that since it is only in commercial, it is in contractually in nature. So in that way, this is arbitrable. Sir, is it a transmission for tra because what we know for copyright it could be assignment and uh, this thing licensing, but it's for transmission and uh, assignment uh, for the trademark. So was it on that? Transfer. Yeah. The, the, the Delhi High Court was a family settlement agreement. so the trademark was i can i'm using different word you can use use the another word which which is which is mentioned in the uh, act as such but the the main talking the surface the main thing was that the court only looks from the lens of contractual provision that's it thank you okay. i think it yeah. answers the question yeah. also yeah. you can go through the you can go through the case for better understanding as such thank you sir dhanyawad thank you very much Oh, sir, uh, so this is Purushottam here. Uh, I had a question. Uh, like, uh, I don't know if you have touched this uh, during the presentation, but uh, could you elaborate on ad hoc arbitration uh, okay. when it comes to this construction industry? Yeah. Uh, ad hoc arbitration, as I said, means this Arbitration Conciliation Act. This means ninety-nine percent of the cases in India happens in ad hoc way only. Means two parties involved. so one party 
will be appointing or nominating one arbitrator another party is nominating one arbitrator and they both will be selecting another one which is known as presiding arbitrator institutional one what happens like if i take the example of mci mumbai center of international arbitration so they have the panel members listed there before so we have to if if in the clause it is mentioned that mcia arbitration rules will be applicable for uh, dispute resolution so i have to choose a member from that panel list i have to give the name other party will give the name and based upon that presiding arbitrator will be chosen so this is how the ad hoc in the sense that i have the miss freedom to appoint or nominate any person be it a retired judge be it a technical person who is an engineer as such i can nominate anyone but in institutional i have the list panel list i have to appoint from there only and yet the panel all the panel list contains the retired judges retired engineers that is that is that are there as such and also the institutional rules will be applicable the administrative part will be taken care of by that institution okay so this is how ad hoc is different from the institution rules like i can uh, share, uh, share the experience with you when i was working as a in house or say uh, engineer so my company's point of view is that to minimize the amount or minimize the uh, this, the uh, what is it the, the claim part as such we usually go for the ad hoc because we have to pay administrative charges also to the institutional bid mci or bid any anything is now if you look the queen mary or uh, this uh, there was some data from the queen mary in december 2021 in which it has given that uh, at first the london center of international arbitration second one was singapore and third is hong kong and fourth one is china so like that it was given so this all are institutional uh, framework this institutional arbitration they all deal with institutional arbitration and like all this acts and all those things so that will be applicable when the substantive thing will kick in means i have taken all the rights uh, from the arbitration arbitration proceeding is over and now i want to challenge the award so i will be looking to the substantive law which is available of that particular country so in that case i will be going and looking to the particular act be it singapore cpc it depends upon the it's how the thing goes goes on and don't worry i will be writing all those in words i will be putting it in the linkedin you can go through it yes sir sir uh, since it's uh, our time has over i think we can end the session with a formal vote of thanks from shriyash shriyash yes Thank you, thank you, Shreyas. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining. Thank you. It was interesting, sir, hearing you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome, man. Welcome.